Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck, which got an important addition in the Lost Caverns of Ixalan with Glimpse the Core, a two-mana sorcery which lets us search up a basic forest card to put on the battlefield tapped. So a nice rampant growth effect that can help set up some of our four drops on turn three, and those can keep us ramping, such as the Invasion of Zendikar, finding two basics, can also transform into the Awakened Skyclave, which has plenty of synergy throughout our deck. And then Blossoming Tortoise can get lands back from our graveyard as another way of ramping, can discount our abilities on lands, such as Argoth making 2-2 two -two bear tokens, or Vinestalk turning into a large 5-5 five -five trampling creature, but it's actually going to be a 6-6 six -six if we control Tortoise, as it gives our land creatures plus one plus one, so those include Vinestalk, but also the tokens we generate from Awaken the Woods, since these will be green forest dryad land creature tokens, so that's a mouthful. Hopefully we can cast Awaken the Woods for at least X equals 2, but but in a pinch we can also cast it for x equals 1 as a 3 mana ramp card, but for the most part we're hoping to skip our 3 drops and go from 2 mana to 4 mana, and then these can potentially set up our 7 drops on turn 4, such as our Titan of Industry, which can gain 5, make a Rhino, sometimes destroy artifacts or enchantments, or provide a shield counter, can be a nice way to stabilize against aggro, and then a Nissa, which is the Wombo combo alongside our Wake in the Woods, since all these tokens count as forests, if we make enough of them, we can set up the minus 7 ultimate ultimate on Nissa, giving all our creatures plus one plus one for each forest we control as well as trample until end of turn. So if we've got a handful of forest dried creature tokens, they can all turn into lethal attackers. And then that's also why we have so many forests in our mana base to enable the minus seven ultimate. The only blue sources come from Vinestalk and then at two islands which we can search up with our broker's hideout or with our various search effects like invasion or maybe a topiary stomper. And then hideout also has a great synergy as a fetch land that we can get back with tortoise so we've got a guaranteed land in the graveyard that we can keep getting back the life gain is nice against aggro and can also synergize with titania to gain even more life as a land ends up in our graveyard and then a fetch land is also great with anissa as we can put two lands on the battlefield to make two mana and search up an elf or elemental such as another copy of nissa titania is an elemental and then of course titan a powerful elemental that can help close out the game and then we also have one of Vorinclex as just a nice medium-sized threat that can help play defense and eventually maybe transform as well into the Grand Evolution to take over. And then Tatiova also has great synergy. Once we get seven or more lands on the battlefield, we can start turning lands into 3-3 elemental creatures. And as long as we control Tatiova, land creatures we control have flying. So those also include the dry tokens from Awaken the Woods, any 3-3s we generate with Tatiova. The Awakened Skyclave will also have flying, since this also counts as a land. So that also has plenty of synergy with Tatiova. Can also maybe help enable Nissa if we transform it, since that's another land entering. So there's plenty of synergy throughout. And if we can play Tatiova into a large Awaken the Woods, we can immediately turn all those dry tokens into 3-3s, three and they will have flying as well as haste, so they can immediately present a lot of damage. And then occasionally we can meld Titania with our one copy of Argoth into Titania Gaia Incarnate. Not super likely to come up, but it does help that we have Tortoise milling additional lands into the graveyard to meet the requirement, and then if we mill Argoth we can also put that on the battlefield to meld the two. And Topiary Stomper is another nice 3 drop, finding an extra basic to put on the battlefield tapped. And then if we have 7 or more lands in play, Stomper can start attacking and blocking as a 4-4 Vigilance. So curving Stomper into Invasion of Zenikar especially is quite nice, as we can immediately attack the invasion if we have 7 lands in play and transform it into the Awakened Skyclave. And then Stomper also works quite well with our Awaken the Woods, since that can generate additional creatures that count as lands, so that can also enable Stomper to attack and block a little bit sooner. And then to complement and glimpse at the core. We also have three copies of Azusa's Many Journeys as another two mana ramp card that can actually put an additional land in play, which is important to enable Tatiova, Stomper, and of course to keep on ramping. And Azusa's Many Journeys lets us play an extra land, which is why we need such a high land count in this deck. We've got 28 lands total, so we can make sure we always have an extra land to play with the Many Journeys, then can also gain three and transform into a 3 3 creature. Now, this does have some drawbacks. If we draw multiples, we're unlikely to be able to put an additional land in play. So that's why I only have three copies, and then we're also complementing it with one Iron Crag as another two mana ramp card to hopefully cast our four drops on turn three. 
And uh, yeah, that's pretty much our entire deck. Our mana base is very simple. Lots of forest to enable Nissa Ascended Animist. And then we can also search him up with Hideout and with our various search effects like Invasion and Stomper. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing some early acceleration, but uh, I'll try and keep it. Titania plus Tortoise can have good synergy, so we can gain some life back against Aggro. And Aggro it is, turn one Phoenix Chick. Turn two Kumano. Might have been their draw for the turn. And then Hideout I could play now to gain a life. I think that's reasonable since I'm not going to be able to play Titania and then Hideout. We're going to have to play this next turn already. And then we at least have a fetch land in the graveyard for Tortoise. Squeeze next. Enters with a plus one counter. So really hoping they can't easily remove Titania here. And then blocking is going to be tricky if our opponent's got a burn spell or a pump spell here. It's going to be a Godric with flying and yeah, Titania holding off the attack. So that worked out. Opponent can pump for 5 damage. So it could have been a lot worse. Could play Argoth, which is untapped at the moment. Probably worth it, even though playing more forests is better for Nyssa. And then Tordos get back fetch land will gain us quite a bit of life back. One from Hideout, and then two more from Titania. And our opponent's going to go all out. If Squee makes a token, they only need one more permanent to give this the ability. Probably have to line up some blocks here. Could put Titania on Phoenix Chick, although Phoenix Chick is pretty likely to come back from the graveyard since our opponent's going wide here. Yeah, Monstrous Rage is going to be rough. Don't think we're beating that realistically. So maybe block Godric. Block Etching. And then if they have a burn spell, they can only kill one of my two creatures. And a lightning strike it is. So we're at five. And we found another Titania, excellent. Could also go for Invasion of Zendikar, attack with Tortoise, transform it, while gaining a bit of life in the process. Or go Titania, attack with Tortoise, gaining three. Having a 4-4 on defense seems better. And then we could even play Titania afterwards. If we'd really like. Or we can just keep the 4-4 back. I guess the upside of um, playing Titania is that next turn I can sink more mana into an Awake in the Woods. And I guess this also gets pumped by Tortoise, it's actually 5-5. Five, five. I think I'll go for the mana efficiency of Titania still. Still can block Squee. Just not quite as good in the face of a pump spell, but a Monstrous Rage kills us regardless. All right, so just a Kumano. And then Titania can also hold off Phoenix Chick is the advantage. Alright, so and now can try to keep attacking with Tortoise. Can maybe even eventually transform Argoth here. And now we also have Vinestalk as an option. But yeah, I imagine we attack with Skyclave and Tortoise. Tortoise also discounting our various abilities. So Argoth is enabled for Titania. We've got four lands in Graveyard. So go for Stomper and then make a bunch of tokens with Awaken the Woods. It's probably the way to go. 
could also mill even more with Argoth in the hopes of um, making an even larger melded Titania, but that doesn't seem necessary. So yeah, let's just sink all our mana into this. X equals 5, leaving Skyclave back. And these also get pumped by the Tortoise. And that's enough for concession. Sadly, don't get to melt Titania here, but it was about to happen. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is fine. We'll need some Curve Toppers to follow up a Glimpse into Invasion. But for now, we've got a nice rampy start that is not susceptible to removal. At least with Vine Stock, we've got something we can do with all that mana. Opponent Blue White. Alright, Tatiova is also potentially a way to make use of the extra land drops. So we'll get an island here so we can play Tatiova. And Adenic is next to help crew the schooner. Okay, so if we play Tatiova, play Vinestalk, Tatiova triggers animating a forest, and then we can glimpse animating another a land here. And then we can attack our invasion, which threatens to transform into a flying 4-4. Their opponent is forced to jump. Alright, that was not bad, seeing the value of Tatiova. And then Vinestalk can also fly now. And get lost deals with Tatiova, so no more flying, but we'll still be left with our 3-3s. Three three Opponent just exploring into a bunch of lanes here. And a tortoise can also grow our forests. And this doesn't target, I don't think. So it doesn't uh, run into Danik shutting it down, which is nice. So yeah, let's go with Tortoise. And then activating Vinestalk only costs us 4 mana now. So I could just send both forests at the Invasion of Zendikar. Opponent could crew and then double block, we're probably happy to make that trade. And then I could also explore here if I wanted to. Do we want a Stomper? It's not all that exciting. We've got better Curve Toppers. And then if I get this up to a 6-6, six, six, then a double block is not going to work out as well. And a Nyssa. I can actually try and keep, and then if Tortoise mills another land, we can actually enable Landfall to get another um, creature, so I'm going to keep this land in hand, I think. And then I could still send the other Forest as well. This one maybe goes face. Since I'm still happy to trade for some of the opponent stuff. Opponent chumps. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. Because transforming invasion is also a way of enabling Nyssa. 
So if something bad happens to Tortoise, we can still maybe get this going. Alright, so step one, play Nissa. Might have to worry about a Wandering Emperor here. And made Vine Stalk. And then a Tortoise doesn't have the best attack right now. Vine Stalk can only target creatures. So we can target the Schooner, and our opponent will be able to crew it, so I think that just means we send maybe 4-4 four, four Forest at the Invasion, the rest goes face. So that if they have a Wandering Emperor, they'll probably get rid of the Vine Stalk, we'll still transform Invasion and enable Nyssa, but I don't think I want to waste two attackers on that. And then, no need to target anything here. Bone and Trumping, so they don't want us to transform the invasion. And the Soaring City bouncing the forest instead. Alright, fair enough. Can try again next turn. And now with Azusa's many journeys, we can also make that happen. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough. Play a land, play many journeys, play another land, get hopefully a Titan of Industry. And that's game, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Many journeys gives us a 2-mana accelerant. Still hoping for something we can play at 3 or 4 mana. And there's the turn 1 Kumano. Well, at least we're on the play this time. And a Flame Breather's next. Sadly, no play for now. But we can gain one. And then Vorinclex is not a bad blocker. We'll also get a 3-3 from Azusa's Many Journeys. Alright, with the Therma Alchemist I wouldn't be surprised if they're also playing with a Red God. Which can uh, turn 1 damage into 4 damage. So that's one way they can go over the top even if we gain some life with Titan. Can be another flame breather. And next turn we can play a uh, six mana Nissa at the cost of two life. Opponent still attacking here. I'm not sure what that implies. Pretty happy to trade. Tectonic Hazard, that's fine. So Lycan is down. Yeah, our opponent must definitely have the Red God in their deck. So stick to the plan, play Nissa. And make a token. Question is whether I want to attack here with Vorinclex. Next turn we can't quite ultimate yet. Opponent does get to transform this. So I might take two damage that I otherwise don't take if I attack. At least. I don't think it's gonna make a difference. Because we will eventually be able to ultimate Nissa, which is gonna end the game pretty easily. Next turn Titan can stabilize us by gaining more life. Now Witch's Mark untaps Alchemist. Can keep digging.
fall to eight. And the festivities can deal one to our planeswalker as well. And yeah, we're down to five here. And another end of festivities. So we're at two. So had I attacked, I would have been dead. So good thing we didn't. So in this I can plus. But now we do have to start attacking. Gain life, could destroy etching, or we can make a rhino. So if they draw the red god, we're not dead on board, since they can only activate alchemist for 4 damage. And yeah, right on time. So we're at a virtual 3 life. This gains 1. This cost 8 mana to transform, so I could do it here. But uh, definitely gonna attack first. And then Nissa can destroy etching to remove a blocker, that seems more impactful. This will drain us for 1 as well, but we're not dead yet. And then an all out attack. And then if the game is not over, we could still transform Vorinclex or gain one with Hideout. But I think our opponent's dead here. Chump, chump. Absorb four damage, and uh, we should be able to trample over. Still incredibly close. Had they found this a little bit sooner, we certainly would have died to it. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with what looks like a keepable hand. Might need to draw a few more lanes for many journeys to be at its most effective. For now, Vinestock, turn to many journeys, put in hideout. And then we'll need another lane to play Tortoise. If we don't draw lands, we have to decide between Awaken and Nissa, which is going to be a tough choice. At least we've got a fetch land in the graveyard to synergize with Tortoise, so we're guaranteed to get something back. Our opponent on kind of a black aggro life gain deck with another Reckoner Raid. So given that our opponent has a Gumdrop Poisoner, we can't really Awaken the Woods for one. Otherwise, they can just go ahead and uh, gain the life with Reckon Raid, and then give minus one, minus one to take out our token. So we'll go with Nissa instead. And then we can hopefully have our Tortoise survive. But most likely it's going to get removed here. Opponent is setting a Poisoner here to take out Tortoise. But we got our value, getting back Argoth. And we can play another one if we'd like. Could also set up a big Awaken the Woods for four. But uh, let's go for Tortoise once again. And then next turn we can set up Titan which also has the option of destroying the enchantment. I will focus on getting more forests in case we find Nyssa. Of 
poisoner attacks. Trading for likeness is reasonable. Opponent might just have another poisoner to take out Tortoise afterwards too. But that's okay. It's gonna be the deepest betrayal instead. Alright, that's pretty good. Luckily Titan has a reach. So we'll play Titan here. And then I could put a shield counter on itself, even though if they attack with the deepest betrayal, they would remove the shield counter. That's still probably worth it in case they have spot removal. And then since we're at 15, I think I prefer token over destroying the enchantment or gaining a life. And then Nissa plus Awaken could maybe get another elemental or elf. Our opponent is attacking. So what do we get rid of? Could just be Nyssa, since we have another Titan, and Awaken could be very powerful if we find our Planeswalker Nyssa or Tatiova. If I play Nyssa into Awaken, it would only be Awaken for two, which still triggers Nyssa, but it's not all that exciting. And then we can block. Put those get to transform it. And then abandoned mire. Getting shielded most likely. They could go for poisoner and take out tortoise. Goes for shielded. All right, another Awaken is nice. So what do we want to do here? Titan number two, making another Rhino. And maybe destroying the enchantment this time, attack all out. Puts the opponent under a lot of pressure. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, no two-man accelerant. Can we still keep? Feels a little slow, although we can just play our tap lands early at least. Titania makes Argoth enter untapped. Yeah, I think this is still too slow. There's basically all three drops in hand. Alright, this is a bit more balanced. So we keep Glimpse, probably all the lands. And then between Tatiova and Nyssa... I'll keep Nyssa. Hideout can maybe synergize with Titania if we draw it, so I'm gonna hang on to it for now. Okay, nice. We get to Glimpse into Invasion, which sets up Nyssa on turn 4. And we've got plenty of forests to go with her. Up against Red Aggro here, but they didn't have the turn 1 Kumano at least. Still turn 3 Godric, hit us for 5. So can't feel too comfortable, but now with Titan we've got a way to stabilize and gain a bunch of life back. And then... Do I get double forest or an island for Vinestock? Next turn I'm going... Forest plus Titan... Yeah, might want blue mana in the meantime. There's a Kumano. And we'll likely see Godric gain flying and Toof a Squee as well. So, still an incredible draw. We fall to three. Opponent says good game. We gain five and make a Rhino. Opponent attacks. Is this a Witch Talker Frenzy taking out the Rhino? Nope, I'm Lightning Strike going face. And another Lightning Strike. Well, I guess it's good game after all. 
On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn to Glimpse. Question is whether to get an island or another forest. Probably get my blue mana sorted. Stomper could also get an island later. But there might be a weird situation where we need to play turn 3 Tatiova. Now we've got a couple options. Awaken the Woods for 2 is one of them. Put on blue-black. Could also go Stomper plus Argoth. And then maybe wait on this sound until we can enable the ability right away. That resolves. Don't need double blue. It's our opponent Esper with Rafine, so Esper Legends. Okay. I think we just awaken for the max amount here, x equals 4, which also enables Stomper to attack. And now we've got a ton of mana to go Nissa plus another Awaken, which will then make a lot of mana with Landfall. So let's see, 3, 7, so x equals 5. If I draw another land, we could go Nissa, Awaken, and then still play Titan with all the mana. Although now we have to worry about potential interaction. Rafine just discarding a land here. Alright, Tortoise is great too. So now I'm liking maybe Nissa plus Tortoise. And then we've got a fetch line to enable Nissa. Could also leave Argoth untapped here. If they don't remove Nissa in response, I can still activate Argoth. And this plays a bit better into a potential make disappear as opposed to just slamming down our most expensive spell. So fetch lands makes two mana with Nissa, as well as getting an elf or elemental. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. So possible our opponent had another go for the throat and wasn't sure about when to time it. But uh, with our landfall trigger here, we get to make a mana. It only costs us 3 mana to activate Argoth, thanks to the discount from Tordos, so we get to make another token. We're super far ahead on board, and we still have a nice activated ability we can keep using, as well as more curved toppers in hand. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Is this fast enough? No 2 mana accelerants, but Stomper into Vorinclex. It's not great, but I'll try it. Bone into red black. Turn to Iron Crank, so it's more of a, a rampy mid range deck. Could see turn three Shieldred. It's gonna be a Sahili's Lattice instead. Alright, so our opponent's setting up a combo here with Gishath. The Lattice could also craft with one or more dinosaurs. And we see a couple dinos in the graveyard already. So yeah, next turn. They could activate this and then hit us for 14. And yeah, I guess that's gonna happen. We can set up Vorinclex for next turn to try and block. Alright, point's going for a big score instead. So they might be trying to go for a one-hit KO with a Lattice. Just good hope that Vorinclex can stick around here. Do we have any alternatives? Don't see one. And it looks like our opponent's going to be able to destroy Vorinclex end of turn, untap, and then hit us with the uh, Lattice. Or maybe do it all in one turn here. So three dinosaurs exiled. Raptor 21 power, and I guess Cell Sword can get it done here. Yeah, pretty cool combo. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Sadly, no turn to accelerant, which is what we were really hoping for. But a Tantio of into an invasion can get us closer to animating lands into 3 3 elementals. Invasion of Gobakan. Okay, maybe exile Tatiova here. Luckily, have double invasion of Zendikar. Okay, so fetch land it is. Wouldn't be able to really stop them from transforming the invasion, it seems. And many journeys, a turn late, but I'll take it. And then we can get rid of another tap land, even though saving the hideout has its advantages if we find Titania. So Invasion is going to transform, protecting their team. Our opponent just running out some initiates here, so not the most exciting start for them. And a glimpse doesn't do a whole lot for us either. Could also play Tatiova first, actually, and then next turn Invasion would immediately trigger Tatiova. Possible our opponent has some removal for Tatiova. At least by casting Invasion we develop our mana. And then next turn we can go Tatiova, play land, play Glimpse and immediately get value. I think that makes a little bit more sense. So they'll get to train hopeful initiates, attack, put counters on the team. Thalia can maybe mess with our plan of uh, casting some of our non-creature spells. And a Nissa. Interesting. So if I play Nissa, play a land, I can still play Invasion of Zendikar. While enabling Nissa's ability. Yeah, that looks okay actually. Then I can still glimpse as well. Find Titania. I could also play Titania now as a, another blocker and then save glimpse for next turn to maybe enable Nissa once again as well as Tatiova. Alright, so we've got some blockers finally. Pretty big mana advantage over our opponents. But a uh, Cathar. And goes for Titania. So we'll hold off Thalia. The initiates can keep attacking. If I double block, we lose Nissa, and they can sank the array if they'd like. So doesn't sound amazing to me. I think we need to keep Nissa around. And a fetch line's nice. So go for Tatiova. Fetch land will animate two of our lanes. And then we can wait and see what we get with Nissa before deciding if we want to glimpse or maybe cast something we got of Nissa's ability. Titan of Industry would be nice. Another Titania, since we have Argoth, could also be effective. There's a Titan. 
So if I want to cast Titan, I'm not attacking with my forest, whereas we could transform the invasion of Zendikar. So I actually still prefer casting Glimpse here. Upside of Titan is we can destroy the array. Hmm, that is tempting too, to stop them from growing their team over and over. If I Glimpse, I animate another land. I get to attack two of my invasions. Have a bunch of four forts back. Maybe I should actually Titan and then we get to enable Nissa again next turn by transforming the invasion. Since that's also a land. So we'll destroy enchantments. And then gaining five or making a 4-4 four -four token is kind of the decision. Think 4-4 four -four token. Okay. Now, they didn't sacrifice the array, so I could actually attack one of the invasions. Potent chumps. Untap my lands. So we shouldn't be in danger of dying next turn. I think I still save the glimpse again to enable Nissan next turn. So we've got ample blockers for the initiates. They can destroy my likeness as an enchantment here. Another Cathar. Good answer to either Titan or a Rhino. And then there's some awesome top decks we could have, such as uh, Planeswalker Nissa or Awaken the Woods with Tatiova in play. Opponent passes and speak of the devil, Nissa Ascended Animist. So can play this first, get another forest. And that should be game here. Minus seven. We've got ten force in play. And attack all out. And that does it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Glimpse into invasion, sets up a large Awaken the Woods on turn 4. Hopefully we don't get to run over in the meantime. Mountain Kumano. Yep, turn 1 Kumano on the play is going to be pretty difficult to beat. But at least our hand's functional. Swiss Spear... Plus, could see another one mana spell. Is this a monstrous rage too? Yep. Yeah, it's pretty much the perfect start for mono reds. We're at 13 and we've only played a land. Might need to go for a tortoise over invasion just to put a creature on the battlefield. Tortoise also pumps up the tokens from Awaken the Woods. Is this a turn 3 Godric? Yeah, the perfect draw continues. We're at 4, and uh, yeah, there's nothing I can do here. Awaken the Woods for 2, opponent still tramples and hits us for 3 and we're dead. Tortoise block still take 5 damage, so yeah, that's the perfect draw for Monored Aggro, and there's nothing we can do about it. And that's part of the reason why ramp is never going to be a great option in best of one standard. At least in the current meta. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not exciting, but I think I'm still keeping Glimpse can set up Awaken X equals 2, and then hopefully we find a nice curve topper, such as our Titan of Industry, which we could then cast on turn 4 with no removal. Ideally we find a different ramp spell, such as maybe Tortoise or uh, Invasion of Zendikar would be ideal. Opponent to red black, Misery's Shadow onto. So I can certainly expect some removal to deal with our dry tokens. 
Looks like a sacrifice deck. So they might have ways of stealing our creature as well. And yeah, we actually found the invasion of Zendikar. Could get an island here on the off chance that I want to activate Vinestalk next turn. Berserkers next can sacrifice the Witness after attacking. And then Witness gets to take a look at the top cards. Or they could have sacked the Berserker itself, still trigger Vran, and keep the 2 2 in play. Soul Cauldron can also synergize nicely with cards like Berserker and Misery Shadow. Found a Tortoise, but I think we need the life gain from Titan here. Just a bit concerned about an Act of Treason effect stealing it and then hitting us on the way back. But we can gain life and make a Rhino. Shield counter was somewhat reasonable. But uh, may not line up great if our opponent's got a Shieldred's Edict. They can just make a sacrifice or only non-token creature, for instance. And wow, opponent concedes, so I guess Titan was good enough here to stabilize. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Glimpse setting up turn 3 Tortoise. And take it from there. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Mountain and Kumano. We've been here before. Hideout would have been nice to play on turn 1 to guarantee a land in the graveyard for Tortoise. Okay, opponent without a creature here. Just a play with fire. And another Kumano. So turn 3 Godric is likely incoming. Tortoise does find a land at least. So next turn... Could go with another Tortoise. If I play Tatiova, then 5, 6, 7, we could get to 7 lanes. Although Lightning Strike deals with Tortoise. And a Phoenix Chick gets a counter. Take 4 down to 12. And a Titan for next turn. So I imagine the place Hideout, play Tortoise, and then we're guaranteed to get back Hideout. That sounds nice. Get as many forests as possible for Nyssa. And next turn we can play Titan to stabilize. Opponent taking out Tortoise once again. And a Monstrous Rage. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Fall to five. So Titan needs to do some heavy lifting. I could hang on to the land to enable Tatiova, although next turn we're most likely playing Nyssa anyway. So gain 5. And then I could take out the Etching, but I imagine just making a Rhino is better. And uh, I'll just play the land out. Opponent goes all out. Block the Phoenix Chick. Could see Witch Talker Frenzy finish off Titan. But then our opponent's stuff is gone. Nyssa can stabilize us by making large ground creatures. Alright, just a Monstrous Rage to push more damage. And they get to trample for one there. Since they only get to keep one roll token. So we're at four, which is a big difference between three. And uh, let's see here. We can play Nyssa. 
make a large token could also take out the etching, but making a token seems better. And then I don't think I can afford to attack to play around a haste creature. But then next turn an ultimate should be game. Can go Tatiova, play a land, and then ultimate. Lightning Strike puts us to one. Luckily this is a monster roll token and not a wicked roll. Awaken the Woods is also fun. So how about we go Tatiova? Play a land. And then Awaken the Woods X equals four before ultimating. That's more than 20 damage. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Many journeys into turn three Tortoise. And then Tatiova is kind of a curve topper. If we've got enough lands in play. And that's one of the advantages of the new Glimpse and many journeys is that we actually get to seven lands a little bit sooner as opposed to ramping with artifacts or creatures. Opponent Esper Callers. And they've got the Spell Pierce, ouch. So it's not Esper Legends, more Esper Control. And a bat's gonna disrupt our hand even more. Probably looking at Titania next turn into Tortoise. So they might take either one of those. Titania's gone. Alright, this sells another good curve topper. And hopefully Tortoise resolves and it mills a land here. Could now also awaken the woods. If I awaken for two, then next turn Nissa is already a possibility. But now that the coast is clear for Tortoise, we'll go for it, finding a land. Can play six mana Nissa next turn. Or we can set up for an ultimate with Awaken the Woods. Step one, probably attack. See if they have a Wandering Emperor. Or spot removal before we trigger Tortoise. Well, looks like an Emperor, perhaps. Milled another land, excellent. Although we want as many forests as possible now. Alright, so they get to exile my tortoise. And I get to awaken the woods for x equals 4 if I'd like. And then next turn we would have at least 9 forests in play, which should be lethal. So I think we go for it here. Just gotta hope there's no discard spell or counter spell next turn. Could still play Tortoise, to be fair, which bumps up all our Drides, which is quite effective. And then maybe bait out a counter spell before we run out Nissa. Spell Pierce isn't the end of the world, since we can just pay for it. And then an ultimate may not be game over. Yeah, maybe we wait one more turn, go for Tortoise and Stomper, and then a Nissa ultimate is definitely game over. Whereas now they might survive with a few spot removal spells. So let's try this. Found a fetch land, which can get another forest. Now a sweeper becomes a concern if we overextend with Stomper. Could still play Nissa, but again, it's going to be just to plus. Can do that post sweeper, I suppose. And then I want to send at least two tokens at Wandering Emperor. So that if they take out Tortoise or take out a token, it still deals with the Planeswalker. 
A rest can go face. Alright, go for the throats, plus maybe something else here. But that's good, we're flushing out those removal spells. Still get to play Stomper. And then, yeah, next turn, Nissa should still be game. With four attackers all getting plus 10, plus 10. Opponent's down to one card in hand. Might be another Wandering Emperor here. Minus seven. And we can still explore if we'd like. Nissa, I could keep on top. How good is it as a follow up if our opponent somehow survives? Not the best. I'll take another Awake in the Woods. And then even with another Emperor exiling a token and gaining two, we're still trampling for lethal. I hope you're ready to lose. This is what you get for hurting my people. Awesome. So yeah, opponent had a decent amount of disruption here, but the combo of Awaken into Nissa remains a great way to beat other mid-range and control strategies. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Got to turn too many journeys, maybe can save hideouts to go with Titania to gain more life. Although I might want to get the tap lands out of the way. Opponent on Monorad, turn to Felden. Alright, so now that we have Invasion, we've got something to do next turn to set up Titans. I think we do play the hideout now. Still gonna get a forest. Next turn I can decide if I want an island with Invasion. There's Kumano. And a scoundrel. Okay, so all in all, could be in a much worse position when facing red aggro. I will still need an untapped land in order to play Titan of Industry next turn. Might want to get an island now for Vinestock. And then if we can't play Titan, we could still play a large Awaken the Woods, or play Titania as well. Alright, Titan's gonna be the much better play. Any enchantment I want to destroy? Not really, just gain 5, make a Rhino. So now the biggest fear is some sort of... Uh, Act of Treason or Threaten Effect, stealing Titan for a turn. We even have Argoth to go with Titania. And our opponent's attacking all out. Might be a Witch Talker Frenzy they're setting up. And we'll have to block Felden at some point and want to block with the smallest creature possible. And then Titan can block Scoundrel. If they Frenzy to finish it off, I'm okay with it. Block Etching. This makes sense to me. And yep, there's a Frenzy. And a Monstrous Rage, but we still get to trade here. And then a Rhino can transform Invasion of Zendikar if we'd like. Felden finds Swiss Spear or Land. And uh, Nissa's not bad either. So just play Nissa. Or we could Awaken the Woods, setting up a Nissa ultimate next turn. Might be more fun. Just a little bit worried about 
Something like end the festivities, dealing one to all my creatures. If I go with Nissa, make a large token. Then next turn, an ultimate is probably still game. Although it's not quite as exciting as going for an awaken here, so let's go for the exciting play. X equals six. Or we could make it five just to keep Skyclave back, which also makes sense. And then now we'll have 10 forests on the battlefield, making the ultimate even deadlier. All right, so we got a nice sample size with our blue-green ramp deck. Of course, mono-red aggro remains a popular deck in standard, and there's not a whole lot you can do if they're on the play with a turn one Kumano. You're just going to be at their mercy. So it's not a matchup I particularly enjoy playing with a ramp, and there's not many tools in standard that can improve it either. So I don't recommend the deck for a ranked ladder necessarily, but overall the deck is certainly capable of some powerful starts, and if the meta shifts towards more mid-range decks, then I could see blue green ramp lining up nicely since it's a deck that doesn't really rely on creatures in order to accelerate its mana and then setting up a large awaken the woods into nissa is something most decks won't be able to interact with and that can easily win the game so that's going to do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day